What's up guys? So we're back in the coach for the training video and today we've got pool. Uh, I've had a few requests to do a pool session in here. This is definitely my favourite session actually because the whole split in here. It's just like with the kit that's now accessible, uh, this session is so so good. Some really good machines and it's exciting because we're also pulling from the floor. So we've got deadlifts. Uh, so we'll see what we can do today with deadlifts. I'm going to try 230 again. I did 230 kilos uh, last time and just kind of misgrooved it a little bit. But I really have a good feeling that will be better today. We'll see. Um, obviously, I'll go by warm ups and see how I feel. But yeah, should be sending that. And yeah, in terms of where I am at right now, body weight is stable at 89 kilos uh, at the moment, which is you know about 16 kilos up from uh, my stage weight and you know holding in a nice spot with food really high and you know the goal now is just to as i always say is just keeping in this phase for as long as i can just to keep getting stronger and stronger in the gym uh doing it for a good amount of time where at the end of it you know we're seeing you know some big numbers moving yeah that's all for me we're just gonna get on with the session it's a really good session today i i really think like pulling from the floor is my favorite thing to do so <laughs> in the gym so yeah we'll, we'll get after it and yeah it'll be a good one let's go So you'll probably notice like, as I'm warming up, I'm really not doing that much. Like I did 100 for four, 140 for three. And you know, I've sort of found with me, as long as you're doing a lot of mobility work before, you get, you're getting warm. Just you don't need to do that much for your, your warm-up sets because you're trying to preserve all that energy for that top set. And like, if I did like eight, 10, it's just unnecessary. I'm trying to literally just get out as much as I need from each warm-up, gain that necessary confidence and then keep going up. So yeah, I think the biggest mistake I see a lot of the time with like my clients when, we, when I end up training with them is how they approach their warm ups And they're almost just like, it's almost like a working set. And you do not want that. Just steadily go up, but do not overdo it.
Why not? No. I'll take that. That was, uh, well, last time I ran, did 2.30, I took three. And, yeah, failed, failed the fourth. I got four there. Fifth, you know, maybe I could have kept grinding it, but I don't think, with recovery going into this session, it wasn't like the best. Just like ever so slightly sore through some areas. Um, but again, it's just more confidence with this weight. This is the second time I've done 230. And, you know, I just, this is where like, yeah, okay, it's good sometimes to alternate rep ranges. It helps break plateaus. You've got to get confident with certain lows and keep turning up with them. So it's about finding that happy medium. If I stalled that again this week, that would be where I'd go back down to a lighter low. But because I turned up again with it and it moved up, now it's about to keep getting it. I'll do that again and again for the next couple of weeks. And the more confidence I get with this weight, the best I'll be. And you know, deadlifts, they take time. You've got, you can't like go off and on with them. You have to keep being like very resilient and you know, just determined to keep turning up. If you have a week off or you know, a week where you're just not in it, you're losing that momentum. Uh, but it's shit like that will, will show guys. Pulling off the floor will show. I don't care what people say, the whole optimal thing about like, oh, you know, you don't have to deadlift. Like, it's no coincidence that the best erectors in the natural bodybuilding game, Keith, Keith West, Keith West, pulls 300. There you go. <laughs> it's so obvious, guys. Get strong at pulling from the floor and it will show. So um, I'm watching this back and I'm realizing like I'm slowly, every session I'm slowly transitioning to doing a stiff leg. They're meant to be conventionals, but I have no idea why, but I just push my hips back and barely bend my knees. So I could probably post this and say it's a stiff leg. <laughs> I'm not really sure, it's, uh, it's, it is pretty much a stiff leg. I mean, you guys can watch it back and tell me in the comments. Um, I like to think my conventional would be stronger, but maybe I'm just better at pulling with, with my hips back. Uh, so it's not a bad thing because at the end of the day with my physique, I don't really need more quads. So I want more hamstrings and glutes. So it's a win-win and also it's a bit less fatigue. So well, in theory it's less fatiguing, but if I'm stronger at it, then <laughs> yeah, not a bad thing. Short people problems. I'm not that short, I swear. But a lot of the machines in here are designed for like eight feet men. Can't understand. So we're going to go into doing something to start where we can get our lats short whilst it's fresh. And uh, this pillow is very nice. Nautilus Gen 1. It's the one that, not the exact one, but it's the one that Dorian Yates used to use in Blood and Guts. So it's just feel, I feel like the, the alignment of it is so nice. It's not too wide, it's not too narrow, it's perfect. So. So one thing, like if you are going to use a pullover, just be quite cautious in the, cautious in the stretch. Because I used a pullover once and I went all the way back here and I felt my terrace major go. And it really messed me up for a couple of weeks. So be cautious in that stretch. If you overstretch, uh, it can be a little risky. Uh, so what I like to implement on it is pausing in each end. So pause up here, pause down here. And that way you've got a good amount of control. So you're always initiating from the muscle you want, you're not using momentum, but it's also a lot safer as well.
Right, so I'm going to go on to the gym AE T bar. So a chest supported row, basically. But we're trying to target mostly the upper back, so bias in the upper back, whilst working a little bit of that as well. Uh, so what I like to do is, on days where I'm pulling from the floor, my rows will be chest supported, uh, because I've already done like my erector sort of work. Uh, and then the other day, I'll do a row which loads up my erectors. So that's quite a good way to program it. So yeah, chest supported row, two sets in this. And we're focusing on like really retracting and protracting the, the upper back, but you know, not moving our body too much that we're limiting our ability to actually you know, lengthen from here as opposed to like just doing this. Because uh, that's a big error I see a lot of people make sometimes. They're literally like going like this and it's just, they're using momentum and they're thinking they need to do this to help the upper back move when really you don't need to. Maybe like a slight bit of movement, but that's all you need. heavy t-bar you will find that on heavier things your progressions will just be a little slower So we're now gonna go into a movement which is gonna work like the upper lat and the lower lat. So we're doing it neutral grip on the side that's pull down. The reason it's upper lat and lower lat is because you kind of pull in from here and it comes back a bit and then it starts to angle this way. So it's quite an interesting movement because that bottom bit is going like this, which is good because it's promoting your elbow to go to your hip, which is what's gonna happen when you wanna really shorten off the lower lat. But because it's coming from here and this is happening, it is going to have a bit more upper lat work as well. Uh, which is good because we've done like the pullover, which is quite a lot of lower lat, upper lat as well. And then we've gone into the row, and now this is again a bit both, and then even more upper lat. And then if you look at my physique right now, I need more up here as opposed to here. I've got quite a lot of lower lat now, and I want more upper lat because I want like my front double bicep, my front lat spread to look, to look a lot better. Those are like that's the main area for my physique I really want to bring up. So. Whole, like, all these exercises in this order, like at the end of this, the whole back is just pumped. It's such a good feeling. <laughs> Let's go, easy. Yes. 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 
Ramón. ¡Ah, vamos! Oh. When you do that, like, make sure your elbow is always tucked. Like, it's something I've really noticed. Like, the more you force this really hard, the more lower lat, lower lat you're going to get. Because you want everything to be perfectly aligned. And if I do this, it's literally engaging here to keep that tension going throughout the whole set. So we're, now we're going to go on to like, just upper lat work. So we've got these D handles because I find having that extra bit of freedom is so useful. It just promotes better accuracy. Like you're not going to get as much tension for your forearms if you do like a fixed grip. So I can literally just pull this down right where I want to to target the upper lat. And um, yeah, it's a very good move in this. So we're thinking about like putting the elbows down, but a bit more to the side us here as opposed to this because we want to work the upper lat as opposed to the lower lat. And when I say upper lat, to be clear, it means like the terrace major. Uh, so. You'll notice like now I'm further into my session, when I do warm-ups I really don't do that much at all like one or two max because when you've already got a massive pump like all you're trying to do is just learn the pattern a little bit before you go into that top set and like you don't want to increase the pump to the point where you're, if you do loads and loads of warm-ups you're going into the top set and you're just going to be even more pumped and sometimes like a high amount of pump is going to literally take away from the quality of what you do like, you can't get things as short uh, you can't like have that confidence through the set because you feel like you can't move it so yeah just don't overdo it for your warm-ups when you're warm because you're already warm so <laughs> Now we're going into this Nautilus bicep curl, which is really good. Uh, it's going to work like a short head, and it's so good because you're getting like right here. It's really nice. So you're going to do this first, and then we'll go into an incline dumbbell curl. Uh, but yeah, this is an insane piece. Like I've never really had a bicep tension like it from a machine before. It's really good. Uh, but yeah, one little tip on this though is when you do a preacher curl or like a curl like this, rotate your body away just from where you're working a little bit. The more hunched over you are, the less range you can work in. So if you come here and then you curl with your front leg forward, your body's now in a position where you can now work for a really large range of motion. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> 
So we're going to go into incline dumbbell curls. So we did the short head, now we're going to do the long head. This is one of my favourite bicep movements. What I like to do is keep my elbows at the back and then at the end of the movement, each rep I'll slowly shift my elbows forward a little bit at the end of each rep. What this allows is my bicep to get really short um, as opposed to like, if you just keep my elbows back throughout, the ability to shorten off the bicep completely, obviously I'm not going to be able to do that, right? I'm just going to work the long head. Whereas, you know, if we can get a little bit more work on the short head as well, at the same time, you may as well do that. Um, just to rinse everything out of the bicep. So, I'm, you know, I like to, you know, go a little heavy on these. It's fun. <laughs> When you do this on a pet deck, make sure you're not going back too far. You probably saw that I was doing like partials. And it's so much better just keeping attention on the rear delt. When you come like all the way back here, 
your scat's gonna just work a lot a little bit too much and you just you will feel it a lot less so just literally just straight arms and cue across like this and that's all you need to do So that's a wrap with today's pool, pool session. Went really well. Very happy to take 2.30 for four. I felt like the fifth could have been there if I was a little bit more, bit more recovered, but ultimately just a little bit more time with this load uh, to gain more confidence. And yeah, just, I think deadlifting, like I said, it takes time to really get into that groove with lifting like a heavier weight when you go up and take those progressions. Uh, but you know, we're reaching that point now with the off season where things will be slower. Uh, understanding that you're not going to see crazy jumps every week. If I did, then you know I'd be pulling 300 kilos before, you know, who knows it, like very soon, and that'll, that's not going to happen. Let's be honest, not not quite yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, very good session. Uh, feeling very good right now in terms of the off season. Plenty of time ahead ahead of us. And as always, yeah, just thank you for all the support. If you're new to the video, drop a subscribe, and yeah, we've got lots more co content coming through. Uh, also appreciate if you let me know what sort of content you would like to see because we want to keep the videos versatile and switch it up a little bit. We've got a long off season ahead, so we've got to, got to be creative at the end of the day. Uh, but yeah, like, subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one. See you soon.